We've been tasked to develop an investment plan, and I'm sure many of you know that we, were, we are in the process of having completed the negotiations with the uh, international partner group of countries, the US, UK, France, Germany, um, the EIB, the European uh, Investment Bank, <coughs> to look at funding a just transition in South Africa. And it's, it's packaged at 8.5 billion, there's lots of 8.5 US billion, right? So it's packaged quite as a, as yeah, we're selling out, we, you know, there's lots of ideological debate. But in the context of what I refer to, which is important for our carbon emissions and for us to be able to move in the direction of, um, you know, decarbonization, it's fundamental. It cannot, there's no compromise around that. The question is how quick or how slow we'll do that, but we are moving in that direction, and partly so because we're committed to a national determined contribution. Here's a, some of the dimensions of what we've been talking through. And, and as you can see, I mean, I think what we're trying to get into is trying to address some of the shortcomings that we experience in other sectors that have to go through transitions in the economy. So this cuts across both the elect electricity, um, new vehicles, and of course, green hydrogen. <coughs> so reskilling and upskilling is quite important. And this is focusing on the existing adult workers so they are better equipped to navigate the transition. What we need to do there, of course, is involve skills analysis, identify demand, because we know there is particular demand, and putting in place substantive short and long-term training programs amongst others. So we need to look at that. That's quite critical. Aligning the skills developed system with anticipated labor force needs of the future. And this is quite easily, because you're going to have these new sectors. If you talk about electricity and, de and decarbonization and investments in the renewable, it's very, very different from what we're doing right now in the way that we have coal-based economy. All electric vehicles, all green hydrogen as a replacement for hard to obey sectors, right? What we can do after 2035. Ensuring foundational skills through education systems. And here we need to look at the adaptive capacity for the broader workforce. This involves curricular transformation, teacher capacity development in the schooling, and post-school systems, especially technical and vocational training for educators and competencies. So this is quite critical for us to be able to ensure that we get alignment in. So when we said for the focus areas for these um, uh, up until 2023, 2027, we basically said what is required, right? Is enable a collaborative planning through a dedicated skills up platform for just transition and the future of work. And that means focusing on coal, renewable energy, green hydrogen, existing vehicles, and NEV value chains. So this is important for us to be able to manage that transition and to develop more detailed in specific interventions to address that. Secondly, a skill development zone, centers of specialization for greater alignment of skill supply. And uh, here we need to look at new livelihood skills located in Mpumalanga, Gauteng, and Northern Cape. And what's really nice about the way we looked at it is to look at specific examples and how we need to work with the Numpumalanga province. Because you're looking at close on to about 100 to 120,000 workers in the province, including value chains, including those that are working in supply chains. Um, SMMEs all affected if we do transition away from coal and from coal production in generation capacity. So it's quite critical for us to look at it in a very specific and detailed uh, way. And then, of course, using skills and intelligence and localized SDZs to leverage and strategically allocate available facet funding for that. Because if we don't do that, then I am afraid what will happen is communities and workers will again bear the, the worst end of a transition. And South African workers know about transition. I was a unionist. We went through a terrible transition between 1993 and 1994 when we entered into, the, into, um, into global markets. Right? We didn't adapt. Um, the argument was, don't worry, you know, it will open up new sectors of the economy, we'll, we'll create jobs over there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, <coughs> um, many years later, 27 years later, we're still not seeing that. And, of course, we have the worst unemployment rate. So, again, we need to make sure that we deal with this in a much more strategic and coordinated way. You know, the critical steps for us to think through about how we deal with this, right, as a good example. And how I think it's important to replicate what we've done in the just energy transition sector for other master plan processes. So it's not only lip service, right? Start of identifying the skills required because it does require long, it's a, it's a long lead time, five to 10 years roadmap. So I've given the data, right? The data is there. 
the investment opportunity is there, right? Um, registration, I showed you the registration. I showed you what it means for some of the investment decisions that are there. We don't have the skill sets. Why are we not developing, right? Because otherwise what will happen, it will be imported from China. Cross-cutting nature makes it even more important for strong coordination and planning mechanisms, right? Extended and connected value chains are quite complex. Think about it. This cuts across different things, right? It cuts across coal, renewable energy, greenhouse, uh, sorry, um, uh, gr uh, green hydrogen. Value chains that include the value chains associated with vehicles and interlinked value chains. We need to think about the skill set that's required and the coordination needed for that to happen. National level strategic support and local level alignment. Again, this is quite important. Because we also tend to think about skills from a national level and not what it means from Kumbulanga, for example. And how we get the systems and outputs that are relevant for Mpumalanga, right? Or do we expect workers suddenly to migrate? Can't be the case. So we need to think about long-term planning about whether some of these sectors and industrial development can happen in Pumalanga and therefore how do we get the organizations and post-school education training in organizations to be able to churn the relevant skills. And then lastly, of course, mobilization across all stakeholders. Uh, you can't do it without labor, business, investing in this. So, so I mean, you saw 1.5 trillion, right? I mean, we took a hammering from the unions and rightly so. I should, I should deny it's a bit of a dumb thing, right? Of the 1.5 trillion, we only allocated 2.6 billion for skills. So of course we took a hiding, right? Because, I mean, we talked about it being integrated into the system and yet we don't allocate sufficient resources. And so I think it's going to be quite important for us to, to leverage private sector, that we need to allocate sufficient resources, gay institutions, support tevet colleges, private sector colleges, all manners of institutions for the post-school education system to be able to get towards that. So this is quite an interesting and very different take what we've done in the just energy transition um, sector relevant to, uh, comparatively so, to other sectors which tend to pay a lot of lip service but don't get very far on the traction of skills, skills demand planning and intelligence gathering.